After dark, this drainage ditch comes alive with tree frog life. Only question is, can I catch it? What's up guys, welcome back to Can I Catch It, the nature show all about finding a wildlife adventure right at home in your own backyard. If it's your first time here and you've got a taste for adventure, consider subscribing. So today guys, I am literally standing less than 10 feet away from the largest gathering of tree frogs I have ever seen. You can't hear anything right now because I've just turned off my light. As soon as they get comfortable again, they'll start singing. Have a listen. I can actually identify three different species of frog from the sound that I just heard. In this video, my goal is to catch all three and get them up close for the camera. During the day, this drainage ditch has a very unassuming appearance. To a bystander, it just looks like a standing body of water probably collecting all kinds of diseases. But to the careful eye, this drainage ditch is actually more lively even during the daytime than it might appear. Just below the surface of water lurks an underwater world seldom seen by the human eye. I am no expert at identifying tadpoles, but I do know that at least three species frequent this body of water. And tonight, I'm gonna go and try and catch as many as I can. Let's see what we can find. So my strategy here is I'm gonna be using my light to distract the frogs and hope they don't go into the water while I come from another angle with my hand and grab them. My first frog was actually not near the pond at all. In fact, I heard this one calling from a tree in the little grove. It was a large gray tree frog, and sure enough, I grabbed him. Whenever you're handling amphibians, make sure your hands are somewhat damp. If your hands are dry, you could risk damaging the amphibian's skin. I placed him in the jar, now to go after the other two species. I had several near misses with various green tree frogs hiding along the banks of the pond, but I was finally able to trick this guy into falling for the light trick. Two down. Will the third time be the charm? Narrowmouth toads have a very distinct call. One that I've learned by heart, because I actually rarely see these guys. They're pretty elusive and kind of bizarre looking, so I'm really hoping I can get him in front of the camera. However, as usual, when I got close enough to get to this guy, he darted underwater, and I lost him. At least I'm two for three, guys. Let's get these other two close to the camera. This first frog is a squirrel tree frog. These guys closely resemble green tree frogs, but are actually a different species. They are primarily nocturnal and have two different calls. The first one is their mating call, while they also have a second call that I was not able to film that they make during rainstorms. This gives them the nickname Rain Frogs. Now the second frog is a Cope's Gray Tree Frog. We actually have two species here in North Carolina, but Cope's Gray has the far larger range, so I'm pretty confident that this is in fact a Cope's Gray Tree Frog. As you can see, these guys are much bigger than the other frogs. And since frogs are opportunistic feeders, that means that he probably also eats the other frogs when given the opportunity to do so. Now you can't see it the way I'm holding this guy, but in this clip, you can actually kind of get a glimpse of it. These guys have a yellow band on the inside of their back legs. This is thought to be used to startle predators. It's also a form of aposomatic coloration, which tells a predator that it could taste bad. The final frog, the narrowmouth toad, I was unable to get, unfortunately, but I still got two really awesome species up close for the camera, and that is always a win. I actually released these guys right here on my porch because they'll probably make their way back over to the pond because they can hear the calls from here. What a fascinating encounter finding a huge congregation of amphibians so close to my house. It's small surprises like this that remind me there's so much more to explore out in my wild backyard. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope to see you guys again next week. But until then, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.